Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, and my new merch store on Teespring where you can get t-shirts, coffee mugs, towels. Hell, if I could put the show logo and the bit shoot URL on it, you can buy it. And there's also a place on my website where you can support me further. There are links to all of these in my description box below. There is every likelihood that President Trump will be re-elected in 2020. In fact, I've already taken a bet on this at 100 to 1 odds, and I'm prepared to take other bets even though I have no money to pay them off because I'm convinced I is going to win. Now keep in mind that I'm a libertarian. I wouldn't vote for either a Democrat nor a Republican if you put a gun to my head. I find their candidates equally odious, but for different reasons. However, since I have no skin in this game and am not emotionally invested in any Democrat or Republican, I think it puts me in an excellent position to accurately evaluate current events and just call them like I see them. And my prediction, based on what I'm about to discuss, is that Trump is going to be reelected with more votes than in 2016. In fact, I don't think you'll able to be, say any longer or whine that the Democrat won the popular vote as if the Electoral College hasn't been the way it, presidents have been elected since the Constitution was ratified over 200 years ago. Trump's going to win and the Republicans may take back the House, and the Democrats will probably lose state and local offices as well. Liberals, this video is mostly for you, and despite what I have to say here that I know that you're going to disagree with, probably vehemently, I would urge you to not click away. I think this is important stuff for you to hear if you want to ever get people elected ever again. You think you have this sewn up. Well, you're wrong. Now, the reason is because you uh, shout things like, but Trump is a racist, sexist, homophobic monster. And you might be right, but it doesn't matter because you've been screaming this since before the 2016 election. Nobody cares anymore. When you start screaming it for so long, it loses all meaning. But all Trump supporters are racist, sexist, homophobic monsters, you wail. And on that... You couldn't be more wrong. Many of his supporters voted for Obama in 2008 and 2012. They didn't suddenly turn racist in a span of merely four years. By screaming this since before the 2016 election, nobody cares about it anymore. Because when you scream about something for so long, it loses all meaning. In fact, all it does do is piss off Trump supporters or anyone who might swing toward Trump. You see, when you say something about people that they know in their heart is wrong, all they do is get angry with you. But Trump supporters are all uneducated hick farmers, you blare. On that one, I know you're wrong. I live in an area that is geographically a rural area. However, the truth is that modern agricultural science means that my part of the country feeds not only the United States, but also the entire world, and they do it with a very small number of people. Most of our population in Nebraska, where I live, and other so-called rural areas, is actually urban. In Nebraska, the majority of our citizens live in Omaha, a metro area of about a million people, and secondarily, Lincoln, the state capital where I live, and I'm, it's home to about 260,000 people and constantly growing. There is an extraordinary amount of agricultural land around us, but they are tended to, they are tracts of land larger than either the New York or Los Angeles metro areas, and they are tended by a very small number of people. And we're also quite educated. I don't know anyone who doesn't at least have a bachelor's degree, and that includes, by the way, our farmers and ranchers who need degrees in agricultural science in order to tend to tracts of land larger than either the New York or Los Angeles metro areas. So again, you're screaming what we know deep down in our hearts is untrue. All we see, frankly, correctly, is that you are provincial, 
uneducated ignorami who would never deign to visit us and learn the truth for yourself. But Trump's a womanizer, you shout, and I am in total agreement on with you on this one. But it doesn't matter. We live in a world where five-year-olds watch porn stars being gang-banged on their phones. If you try and appeal, say, to the Bible Belt over this, well, you got nowhere to go. You see, I live in the supposed Bible Belt, and it hasn't existed for at least a generation, maybe two. I've lived in cities as large as Chicago, I lived there for 10 years, and in towns as small as Redfield, Iowa, a population of sub-2000. I lived there for about 10 years, and I can tell you that there's absolutely no difference between how often people in Chicago go to church compared to those in Redfield. If you're looking to appeal to the Bible Belt, you're appealing to a demographic that hasn't existed for a couple of decades. In fact, whenever you hear some political analyst or journalist talking about the Bible Belt, just change the channel or click away because they have no idea what they're talking about. But all the Democratic candidates are better, you whine. Well, no, they're not. Something you have to think about. Most people are neither socialist nor communist. And they look at the field of Democratic candidates and all they see are socialists and communists. Most people aren't socialists and communists. They're not going to vote for them. Now, the biggest reason that Trump is going to win is because for two solid years, the Democrats bet the farm on Russian collusion. For two solid years, every Democrat with a voice proclaimed that Trump was a traitor working with Vladimir Putin to steal the election from Hillary Clinton, and there'd be damning proof of this real soon now. And then it all fell apart. It didn't just fall apart, by the way. It exploded in the Democrats' faces, and it left them looking like vindictive, hateful children bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary. I have to tell you, being vindictive, hateful children bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary completely turns away voters. They see correctly that the Democrats are fools and should not be allowed access to the reins of power. Whatever Trump is, he's not a fool. And Joe Average would rather see someone who's not a fool in charge of things, even if that someone isn't the greatest human being in the world. At least, he's not a complete idiot, which is what the Democrats look like now. And Russian collusion, it was never going to go anywhere. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Remember, the entire debacle started with a story shopped around to all the major news outlets for months, and none of them would run it because they couldn't find anybody who could substantiate it. It was only ever picked up by BuzzFeed, the weekly world news of the internet. These guys are so bad, they might as well be running stories on Batboy. If you're getting your news from BuzzFeed, click away. Now, the secondary motto of my show always is, nothing you see in the press is real, and nothing, and it scrolls past on my lower third in every episode. But that goes double, triple, and quadruple for BuzzFeed. It is the weekly world news of the Internet. And you have no argument in favor of a Democrat. All you do and all you've done, ever done since the, before the 2016 election is scream about how bad Trump and his supporters are. And again, particularly among his supporters, you are absolutely, completely, 100% wrong. And his supporters know it deep down in their hearts. You cannot garner votes by insulting people. Hillary tried that, and look how that turned out. You have been screaming untruths that your targets know are wrong deep down in their hearts for so long that they won't listen to anything that you have to say. They certainly won't be voting for candidates that represent shrill, screaming, unreasoning children, which is what you look like now. I scroll past so much on my social media that are just more insulting screeds about both Trump and worse, his supporters. Your insulting screeds have driven them away, permanently. You also have no campaign platforms. My God, what are the Democrats really running on? Two things, orange man bad and free stuff. Well, you've already driven away all Trump supporters permanently with your ignorant screeds that they know deep down in their hearts are wrong. And none of them, and more importantly, swing voters, or anyone not trapped in a minority of communist and socialist thought like yourself, 
are socialists or communists. Free stuff doesn't sell because anyone with half a brain knows that free stuff means higher taxes. My liberal friends, you need to understand this thoroughly and actually think about it. You are a minority. The overwhelming majority of voters are neither communists nor socialists. They never have been and they never will be. So running on twin planks of orange man bad and free stuff will turn them off and you will not get their votes. Russian collusion exploded in the Democrats' faces and they now look like hateful, vindictive children bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary and they should never be allowed access to the reins of power. You have spent four years screaming untruths that your targets know are untrue deep down in their hearts. You will never win them back. They are gone permanently. Your candidates' platforms consist of only two planks, orange man bad, and free stuff. And the majority of voters are turned off by this because free stuff only ever means higher taxes. Now, what are you going to do if Trump wins? I am deeply afraid of what will happen if Trump wins. I mean, deeply afraid. You are already enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. If there's a Democrat out there who didn't click away, despite my entreaty not to, it's because probably they're my personal friends, and they're just shaking their heads and chuckling because they think I'm deluded. Well, I am flat out telling you, you are enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. What are you going to do if Trump wins? You're going to be shocked and horrified and even more enraged. I mean, if you think that how you felt when Hillary lost was bad, you got another thing coming. Because this time, I don't know what you'll do. Will wailing at the top of your lungs be the end of it? Well, I doubt it. You've already tried behaving like a two-year-old, and that didn't get you anywhere. Will tacitly agreeing with the Antifa, a violent fascist terrorist group, be the end of it? Well, I doubt it. You tried that for more than four years, and where did it get you? You hate over half of your fellow countrymen with a hatred so deep that I cannot comprehend it. You really, honestly hate and detest them so viscerally, so deep in your heart that I literally cannot understand it. What are you going to do with that searing hatred that you have for half your countrymen if Trump wins? Frankly, I fear civil war. I fear that since behaving like children and allowing a minority of people to be bloodthirsty would be murderers, and having this deep-seated, searing, irrational hatred deep in your heart, you will think, that it's time to start killing people, to start killing anyone who disagrees with you. When you do, you will trigger a civil war. And when you do, I hope that people will pay attention to my video, Winning the Second American Revolution in a Week, for which there's a link to in my description box, because I talk about how such a war could be ended in only a week and with relatively little bloodshed. But if instead people wage a traditional civil war, then there will be bloodshed in the streets. Brother will be pitted against brother, and father against son, and more people will die than in the first civil war. If Trump wins, I urge Democrats, liberals, socialists, and communists to simply sit down, breathe for a while, and allow this unreasoning hatred that you've allowed to fester for so long to finally pass away. Put away the hatred, put away the insults, and start thinking for the first time in at least four years. Socialists and communists are a minority in the United States and always will be. So please sit down and breathe for a while. And I'm going to tell you how. This is a type of breathing that I've done anytime I've been angry or under stress, and it works like a charm. I learned it 40 years ago, more. Here's what you do. Here's how to breathe. When you breathe, it's just like, it's not like that. It's like this. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it at the top for a second or two, and then breathe out through your mouth. 
hold it. Then breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Do it a lot. Do it till you get to the point where it is something you can do naturally. If you can get to that point, you'll be better off as a human being. If you breathe like that for a while, you can allow the unreasoning hatred that you have allowed to fester for so long to finally pass away. And that's all that I have to say about that. I would like to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks for watching, and that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the bit you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.